Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Furlan, and today I'm going to talk about low back pain. Low back pain is a condition that affects so many people, almost 100% of people will have at least one episode of back pain in their life, so let's talk about it. In this video today, I'm going to explain what people can do when they are experiencing an episode of low back pain and also what they can do to prevent recurrence or future episodes of low back pain. So how do we define low back pain? Actually, low back pain is defined as pain in the area between the lowest ribs and the gluteal folds. And this area of the body is very mobile. We can do many things. We can bend forward, we can extend, we can bend laterally, we can also rotate this area of the spine. It's an area that is very mobile and therefore can be affected by many different conditions. So the bones are called vertebras and they are very strong and they are very thick pieces like a puzzle that is put together one on the top of the other. And the weight of our upper body has to go through those bones called vertebras. And between those vertebras, there are these joints or articulations. One vertebra articulates with the joint, with the vertebra above and with the vertebra below. And where they connect, it's a joint and those are called facet joints. And also to connect these vertebras together, like tapes or glue, there are the structures called ligaments. And then are the muscles that they connect to the vertebras to make them move. And the muscles are also responsible for the stability of the spine. And last, I'd like to mention a very important structure that is inside of the spine. It's the spinal cord and the nerves. They are protected inside of the vertebral canal and they are an extension of the brain. The spinal cord is an extension of the nerves that come from the brain. And when they exit the spine, they're called the nerves. So what can cause pain in this area of the spine, the lumbar spine? Well, any structure that I mentioned before can be a generator of pain, actually. And what's really important is to exclude or rule out any serious or life-threatening condition that affects this area, such as a fracture or infection or a tumor, cancer or inflammation of the joints, or any compression of the spinal cord or these nerves, the nerve roots that are exiting from the spine. But fortunately, these conditions, the more serious conditions, they are very rare, they're not common. And when we examine the patient and we ask a number of questions, when we put together the symptoms, the signs that we see in the physical examination, we basically have an idea if we are dealing with a serious condition or if it's a known life-threatening low back pain. So once we exclude those serious conditions causing the low back pain, we know that the person has a benign low back pain and we call this uh, non-specific low back pain. That's the name that we get. Non-specific means that it's not a specific serious condition causing the low back pain. So for these benign non-specific low back pains, there can be many different types of pain. If the pain is a acute episode, the onset is a very uh, acute, sudden onset, we call this acute low back pain. But if the person is having pain in this area, the low back pain area that is ongoing every day for at least three months, we call this chronic non-specific low back pain. And it's important to differentiate if this is an acute low back pain or a chronic low back pain because the treatments are going to be different. So we'll talk about that. So what is acute low back pain? Well, First of all, I'd like to say that uh, the pain is really bad. It can be very, very intense. It's difficult to move. It's difficult to find a position to sleep. And the person gets worried and anxious what's going on. And um, because the anxiety is also there present, the fear that this is something serious, 
Uh, usually when there is anxiety and stress, the pain even gets worse. We know that when or uh, we have stress in our lives, the stress hormones go higher, like the cortisol and adrenaline, and those hormones make the pain worse. So we need to be careful that um, acute low back pain is very painful, but it can also be aggravated by anxiety. So during an, an acute episode of a non-specific low back pain, what is it the person can do? Well, there are many things. The first thing is we tell them to keep going with their normal activities, there is no need to take rest, especially bed rest. So we don't recommend anyone with a non-specific low back pain to bed rest. We tell them, keep doing the activities as normal as possible, do what you can, because there is evidence that uh, if they do this, the low back pain will resolve quicker, the acute low back pain. The other thing that they can do is also take some over-the-counter analgesics. They can talk to a pharmacist and ask what is available here for me without a prescription that I can take. There are some muscle relaxants, anti-inflammatories, analgesics that they can take and they could take high doses and ask the pharmacist how much high they could take and uh, they could take this for you know as long as the pain is there, maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks. The other thing that they can do at home is also to apply a hot pack or ice some people prefer ice packs, the other people prefer hot, uh, whatever they prefer, whatever makes the pain better, they can apply that at home. Also, they can go to a therapist, like a massage therapist, an acupuncturist, a chiropractor, a kinesiologist, a physiotherapist, and those professionals can help them to alleviate those symptoms with manual therapy, adjustments, modalities, that can also be very helpful, especially when people cannot take those uh, analgesics medications. The other thing that uh, it's very helpful is to find a position uh, that you can do at home that usually doesn't cause any pain. I tell my patients it's usually a Z position, and this is the Z position that I like to recommend to a lot of people to do at home. If this, when you do this position, you feel no pain, your low back pain goes away, I recommend them to stay in this position for about 20 minutes every day because this will relax the muscles, relax the structures that are hurting and the, when the person gets up, they will feel better. But some people don't feel uh, pain-free when they do this position and some other people will get better when they hyperextend their spine and uh, also this is very helpful if this helps your pain when you do this you feel that the pain is relieved then do this many times during the day do this posture many times during the day and some people have a bathtub at home and they have access to a warm pool it's very good because that will relax the muscles will help also to release the stress from the acute pain if they can soak in a bathtub with a very warm, very hot water and put some magnesium salts because the magnesium will, and will relax the muscle and soak there for maybe 30 minutes every day, that's very relaxing and will help the acute low back pain. And it's also important to remember that the acute low back pain usually resolves within a few weeks. Uh, the majority of people get better within two weeks and sometimes even up to four or six weeks. So we have to be patient and wait and it will go away. So now a different thing is uh, chronic low back pain. Some people have chronic pain, which means that they have every day ongoing for at least three months and it's a chronic problem. It can be very annoying, very depressing and it's constant. And uh, there are some things that the person can do to also alleviate the chronic back pain. It's possible that a person that has chronic back pain, like they have a, some sort of ongoing pain every day, they may also have an acute episode of pain, like a flare. And if that's the case, they can do the things that I recommended before for acute low back pain. But uh, sometimes the person just is living with that constant nagging, chronic low back pain. What they can do is a couple of things they can do to help. In some cases, chronic pain is a disease of the pain system, and I explained this in another video. If this is the case, 
then the treatment to fix the pain system is what I call the 5MIS, 5MIS. The five M's are mind, movement, modalities, manual, and medication. I is injections or interventional, and S is surgery. But the most common cause of chronic low back pain that I see in my clinic is myofascial pain syndrome. I also have another video explaining myofascial pain, and the treatment consists mainly of exercises. And the exercises are the SSAR, stretching, strengthening, aerobics, and relaxation exercises. We also have to remember that there are many other causes of chronic low back pain, so you need to consult a therapist, a physician, to see if it's not a compression of the nerves or spinal stenosis that could also be causing chronic ongoing symptoms. So what I'd like to explain now is how people can prevent an episode of low back pain, actually how they can prevent an acute flare of low back pain. We, there are many things that we can do to make the episodes of acute low back pain to be more spaced out, to not to occur so frequently, to be more rare. And also there are things that we can do. So if, when we have an episode of low back pain, that can do, uh, the duration can be shorter. It doesn't need to be six weeks. There are things that we can do. So that episode will be maybe two weeks. And also, there are things that we can do, so when there is an acute flare, it doesn't need to be so intense and so severe and so debilitating. We can help and we can do things before that flare happens. So if it happens, it will be shorter, um, less intense and short duration. So the secret is to maintain a healthy spine. So when we are faced with an abrupt movement or we need to use some muscles or something doesn't get in the right spot or spine is strong and then the flare will not be so severe. And how do we maintain a healthy spine? So the first thing that we can do to maintain a healthy spine is to maintain a regular routine of exercise. That's really important. We know that our spine is strong if we can do a plank, if we can do a side plank, if we can hold a back arch, if we can do various uh, many bird dogs, uh, if we can do many dead bugs, for example, or if we can hold the position of the Superman a couple of times, or if we can do some crunches. If we can do all of this, it means that the muscles around our spine are very strong and we are having a healthy spine. Also, it's not only about maintaining the muscles strong, but also stretching them. It's really important that the muscles around the spine, uh, including the paraspinals, the gluteus muscles, quadratum borum, and the abdominal, all the muscles around our spine, they be stretched on a very often like a daily basis. I don't recommend doing this on the bed because usually the mattress is very soft. I recommend getting a mat and doing this on the floor if possible. Finally, it's also important to do some aerobic exercises. It's important to increase activity that uh, uh, increase activity that increase the heart rate. And uh, when we know that we are doing aerobic exercises when we are breathing fast and when our heart is beating very fast, we know that that's aerobic exercise. And examples can be things like uh, biking, running, skating, skiing, dancing, swimming, and there are many other options, so do whatever you like. And second is to maintain a healthy BMI. BMI is a body mass index and is a measure of how much body fat we have in our body and it's related to height and weight in adult men and women. And to calculate the BMI, first uh, you get your weight in kilograms and your height in meters. And then you divide your weight by your height and then divide by height again. And these are the BMI categories. So underweight, normal weight, overweight and obesity. And third is to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And there are a couple of things that we can do. 
The first one that I like to say is about smoking nicotine or smoking cannabis because the smoke of anything that we inhale and goes to our lungs contains a lot of substances and these substances cause the oxygenation of the tissues impaired. So they impair the, the transport of oxygen that goes to the muscles, the spine, the disc, the ligaments. So people who have back pain, especially low back pain, should really think about not smoking anything, inhaling any smoke. That includes cigarettes, cigars, and cannabis. The next thing is about alcohol. People who drink too much alcohol, they may have impairments of the nerves. There may, may also be impairment of the liver and pancreas function, the stomach. So those things aggravate pain in general. We know that uh, there is a safe limit. We call this low risk drinking guidelines. And in Canada, those guidelines recommend that um, uh, a healthy drinking means 10 drinks a week for women with uh, no more than two drinks a day and for men is 15 drinks a week with no more than three drinks in a, in a day so no binge drinking another lifestyle modification that is very important for people with low back pain is to maintain a regular sleep routine like uh, sleeping in a dark room, low noise, getting enough sleep, enough that when you wake up in the morning, you're not feeling tired. That, then we know that you have enough sleep. Diet is also very important. I recommend my patients with chronic pain to avoid food that contains glutamate because glutamate activates the pain pathways in our brain and food that contains glutamate is usually food rich in MSG. The G in MSG is glutamate. Also, for people who have chronic low back pain, it's important to avoid constipation because if the person cannot have a bowel movement every day, they, the stools will be hard and hard to pass and that may put a lot of strain in the muscles of the pelvis, the muscles of the lower back area. So eating a lot of uh, uh, fluids, and fibers is very good to avoid uh, constipation. So the goal should be to have at least one bowel movement every day. And still talking about diet, it's important if a person lives in an area that they don't have a lot of uh, sunlight exposure, that they need to supplement vitamin D. I recommend 1000 units every day. And for people who have back pain, especially related to their daily activities or to work, I usually tell my patients that they need to maintain a balance between rest and exercise. So for those people who sit the whole day, they work uh, in a desk job kind of work, they need to take frequent breaks and do some stretches and exercises, go up and down stairs and move. On the other side, people who are very physically active at, the, at, at work, they need to take breaks and rest and relax, not only relaxing their muscles, but also relaxing their mind. So there has to be a balance between resting and movement. And please remember that this video is not intended to provide medical advice. It's only for educational purposes. If you think that you have a condition that is causing you low back pain, please seek medical care to have a proper diagnosis and a treatment plan for you. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it and also to subscribe to this channel if you want to be alerted when I post new videos here. And if you like uh, to ask some questions or suggest new topics, just write down your comments on the box below. And you can contact me too via Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.